welcome to epg patashala i am ravi koreshetter senior fellow dr vs vakankar archaeological research institute in bhopal in this presentation i will be dealing with the earliest settlements in the indian subcontinent dating back to the lower paleolithic time period uh, this module is part of the uh, subject on indian culture and uh, and also Uh, paper 2 on uh, pre and protohistoric cultures of india the module is specifically uh, dealing with the lower paleolithic phase of the indian subcontinent this was the time when the earliest human settlements um, were um, uh, established in the indian subcontinent um, in the sense that when we talk about the establishment of the indian uh, earliest settlements in the indian subcontinent Uh, there are implications that uh, this region was colonized by the people coming out of africa uh, during the pleistocene time period and uh, in this case we are also referring to this particular time period as acheulean uh, culture acheulean uh, culture refers to the fact that the earliest settlements found in the indian subcontinent represent the acheulean phase of the lower paleolithic as opposed to Uh, the presence of oldowan and acheulean earliest settlements in africa because of this particular uh, nature of evidence coming in the context of african continent uh, the comparative study of earliest stone tools that have been found in india and africa has uh, helped in identifying a distinctive uh, phase of uh, human colonization of the subcontinent uh, represented by the acheulean culture the term acheulean refers to the fact that the lower paleolithic phase in the indian subcontinent was characterized by the production of um, hand axes and cleavers these hand axes and cleavers were first invented by the human ancestor who has been referred to as homo erectus the earliest date of homo erectus for so far found across the old world date back to about 1.8 million years and that is the earliest um, evidence from any part of the old world uh, when we, the evidence of homo erectus found in europe and in the indian subcontinent and further north uh, as well as further east in the asian continent um, uh, are um, much younger than those found in africa and the assemblage of stone artifacts which are also referred to as acheulean techno complex are also the oldest in africa and homo erectus has also been credited with the invention of this particular technology and that homo erectus was the first human ancestor who gradually uh, dispersed out of africa and entered into the contiguous uh, geographical areas such as europe and um, asia in the context of this particular model it has now become essential for all of us to understand the processes behind this particular colonization of europe and asia and uh, the chronology of uh, the dispersal uh, out of africa and their entry into different um, uh, parts of europe and asia in this context we are more interested in understanding the earliest settlements in the indian subcontinent again against this background let us have certain specific objectives to understand the earliest phase of um, um acheulean culture in the indian subcontinent which includes uh, understanding the processes behind uh, the the expansion of uh, uh, humans from out of africa into the indian subcontinent with emphasis on timing of this particular entry into this indian subcontinent and once these uh, humans began to colonize the indian subcontinent in the manner in which they spread into the interior uh, parts of uh, the indian subcontinent becomes an important um, factor for understanding the way in which uh, the lower paleolithic culture developed in the indian subcontinent and then we are also interested in establishing the natural environmental factors that were responsible for uh, the way Uh, for the distribution pattern that we observe based on the series of investigations that have been carried out in india on a 
large number of lower paleolithic sites. Several hundred uh, lower paleolithic sites have been documented from across the Indian subcontinent. And there is also an observed pattern of distribution of these lower paleolithic settlements across the Indian subcontinent. This map clearly reveals the fact that um, sites have been found uh, from the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent to as far south as uh, the northern parts of Tamil Nadu. In western India, in Saurashtra and in eastern India, uh, in Bihar and uh, you know, uh, Orissa and those areas, we have seen a uh, large number of sites uh, distributed along the major river valleys. This is the general pattern of distribution as sh shown in this particular map. But there are also sites of this time period which are not located on the uh, banks of these major rivers, but they have also been found in the inland regions along the smaller river valleys as well. Here the emphasis will be uh, to understand the relationship between the local environment in terms of availability of suitable raw material as well as the availability of plant and animal food resources. This was the time when the lower Paleolithic communities which were uh, scattered across the Indian subcontinent were primarily um, dependent on a subsistence economy uh, based on hunting and gathering. So in this context, the regional environments uh, have got to be understood uh, properly to be able to establish man-land relationships. The first discovery of an Acheulean site in the Indian subcontinent was made by Robert Bruce Foot. Robert Bruce Foot was working in the Geological Survey of British India. He was primarily a geologist but had a lot of interest in understanding uh, the evolution of man. Uh, and also in identifying the Indian subcontinent as one of the original habitats of uh, early man. So when he became uh, a superintending geologist uh, in the British Geological Survey and was based in Madras, he began to look for um, pa Paleolithic sites and he was familiar with uh, what is Lower Paleolithic because he had already been exposed to the distinctive type of stone tools in various museums in Europe. So when he came to India, he was very particular about uh, looking for similar tools in the Indian subcontinent while he was engaged in uh, uh, geological survey uh, in various parts of the southern India, which came under the British rule. Here we also see that after foot, there were series of investigations were carried out by a large number of uh, archaeologists in India and this was possible because Foot during the course of his uh, 40 to 50 years of geological survey in southern and western India had brought to light a large number of uh, lower Paleolithic sites and also uh, archaeological sites of the later time period. Uh, after him, uh, there was not much interest in the continuation of uh, lower Paleolithic research in India, but the number of sites and the manner in which he described these sites uh, were very, very pioneering and were also very meticulous in terms of uh, providing information about the context in which lower Paleolithic sites occur. Because of his contribution to the uh, understanding of India's prehistory and his consistent effort at providing a clear picture of distinctive types of uh, stone artifacts across southern and western India, and the fact that all his collection of antiquities were systematically catalogued and published, uh, he has been rightly regarded as father of Indian prehistory. But until 1940s, uh, there was not much uh, effort at continuing the work left behind by Robert Bruce Foot. But it was later uh, Professor H.D. Sankalia of Deccan College in Pune, who was uh, a ardent student of Robert Bruce Foote's work and had read the catalogues of Robert Bruce Foote which were published by the Madras Government Museum in Madras and had identified uh, problems for, uh, you know, and issues were identified by him for uh, continuing research in the area of Indian prehistory. As a result, he identified several students who were asked to uh, go into those areas where formerly Robert Bruce Foote had carried out 
survey of um, survey and documentation of uh, stone age sites with professor h d sankalya in the lead uh, a stone age prehistory in southern and western india was carried out by a couple of his students uh, to mention a few names the names of r v joshi uh, r s pappu k padaya uh, stand out and their contribution to uh, exploring areas which were not previously explored by geologists and archaeologists uh, were um, uh, the focus of uh, their survey in addition to the work in western and southern india southeastern india was also taken up for survey by mlk murthy his contribution to understanding um, the stone age prehistory of uh, the chitur district is one of the most uh, significant contribution to the understanding of lower paleolithic cultures in southern india now this map also gives us uh, uh, some idea about the areas which were preferred by early colonizers of the indian subcontinent although the existing maps of distribution of uh, lower paleolithic sites uh, uh, show uh, that the sites are related to the major drainage networks uh, in the indian subcontinent uh, the recent survey of inland areas away from the major rivers have also given us clues to the fact that it was not only the major river valleys which were ideal habitats for the lower paleolithic communities but inland areas which were supported by the perennial spring activity and the regions where uh, suitable raw materials like chert quartzite basalt uh, sandstone uh, were available these were also considered suitable for human occupation and uh, their preferred areas have also been identified and that fact that these sites are not only along the major rivers they are also found in the inland areas has given us an idea that some areas which have been identified as purana and gondwana basins uh, have found are found to contain uh, continuity of human occupation from lower paleolithic to upper paleolithic time, times and even beyond okay this is the region of uh, upper gondwana formations in northern tamil nadu where food had discovered very important sites the earliest discoveries were also made here the site of palavaram as well as athirampakkam the site of athirampakkam was taken up for detailed study in the context of uh, multidisciplinary uh, methods that are available now the continued investigations at athirampakkam uh, for the first time in india has given us an absolute date for the um, antiquity of lower paleolithic occupation and this date goes back to 1.5 million years ago indicating the fact that as early as lower pleistocene um, homo erectus populations expanded out of africa and uh, they had entered the indian subcontinent in addition to this site in southern india further north westwards of athirampakkam we have one more site called isampur in the bhima basin of northern karnataka which has been identified as the oldest lower paleolithic quarry site and that has been dated to about 1.2 million years ago for the northwest in the present pakistan region in pubbi hills we have a couple of sites which also give us an indication of the fact that lower paleolithic times um, uh, human expansion into the indian subcontinent was taking place this map represents the northern part of the uh, northern part of karnataka region which is also known as uh, um, kaladgi basin and this basin was identified as a stone age habitat by robert bruce foods survey in this region in 1880s along the river kataprabha and malaprabha a large number of sites have been identified and uh, initial work was restricted to these two major rivers but subsequently inland areas between uh, kataprabha and malaprabha regions uh, in the region where we have uh, extensive outcrops of quartzites sandstones um, and uh, similar rock formations uh, we have found um, we have found large number of sites nearly 400 and odd paleolithic sites have been found in this area this is the example of the quartzite outcrop which is um, uh, an ideal rock and that was extensively used by lower paleolithic communities who manufactured hand axes and cleavers making the best use of this uh, rock available in that region these are examples of some of the tools which were excavated from 
uh, hill slope uh, colluvial sediments and here we have examples of a hand axe and a claver which were made from blocks of quartzite rock which were detached from outcrops of quartzite in the region of uh, uh, Lakmapur in northern Karnataka. This is an example of uh, understanding the context in which uh, the early Paleolithic uh, um, settlements were located. Normal understanding is that wherever we have uh, a perennial uh, network of streams, you have the uh, opportunity for these early Paleolithic hunter-gatherers to locate their settlements. But in this particular investigation in the Lakmapur region, the settlements have been found in the context of uh, ancient spring activities. This is the region even today which does not have even network of even uh, low order streams. So this survey here has clearly indicated that there were springs in the former times which later dried up and at the time when springs were active, human activity was um, you know, uh, flourishing in this particular area. So in addition to uh, understanding the relationship between quartz outcrops and early Paleolithic settlements, some experiments were also carried out by archaeologists um, in terms of replicating uh, the stone artifacts belonging to the lower Paleolithic period and the suitability of uh, quartzite rock for making such uh, artifacts. This replication technology helped us understand the uh, processes involved in uh, procuring the raw material, processing the raw material and then finishing the artifacts itself. At another site called Benkaneri near Lakmapur in the Kaladgi Basin, replication experiments were carried out by archaeologists to understand the suitability of uh, quartzite outcrops that were previously um, extensively utilized by lower Paleolithic communities. Here it was possible to understand the manner in which raw materials were procured and then modified into finished artifacts such as hand axes and cleavers. Now these two are examples of quartzite hand axe and a cleaver. Now we move from Kaladgi Basin to uh, the Bhima Basin where uh, very intensive surveys and excavations of a series of lower Paleolithic sites have been carried out. Within the uh, Bhima Basin, a small area measuring about 500 square, square kilometers, uh, nearly 300 and odd lower Paleolithic sites have been uh, documented systematically. But in addition to that, several of these sites have also been uh, excavated and these excavations have resulted in, uh, you know, ex revealing the presence of uh, house floors uh, belonging to the lower Paleolithic period. And in addition to that, the site of Isampur, which we mentioned already, represents the oldest uh, quarry site of the lower Paleolithic period. Here several lakhs of uh, uh, pieces of limestone uh, artifacts and the debitage uh, resulting from stone napping activity have been systematically documented. In addition to that, some of the uh, fossil bones of animals were also subject to uh, dating by ESR uh, method and that method has given a date of 1.2 million years for the site of Isampur uh, in northern Karnataka. This map gives us a clear picture of the distribution of uh, dense distribution of uh, Paleolithic sites in the Hunski Valley. Now this Hunski Valley is a small stream originating in the plateau shown on the slide towards the left and flowing across a, a valley floor uh, for about 35 kilometers and then finally joins the river Krishna. This is also, this Hunski river is also joined by um, Baichapal Nala from the north. So the distribution of, is also shown here reveals that the area was intensively occupied during the lower Paleolithic times. And the plateau is formed by the limestone rock formations and amongst these limestone outcrops uh, particularly a harder variety uh, known as siliceous limestone was particularly selected by these uh, lower Paleolithic communities to modify that particular rock into hand axes and cleavers. And now these settlements during the lower Paleolithic times were supported by large number of springs across the landscape in the Hunski Baichwal valleys that we see here. Now this is a closer view of the excavations that was carried out at the site of Isampur uh, where we have um, in situ occurrence of uh, uh, finished artifacts as well as the waste products. 
And this was uh, uh, systematically excavated and documented by K. Padaya of uh, Deccan College. This uh, slide gives us a clear uh, picture of the stages involved in procuring raw material. Large blocks of uh, limestone were detached from the outcrops and uh, from this particular block, uh, large flakes were detached fr from along the perimeter of this particular back and the resulting flakes were subject to modification into hand axes and cleavers. In Western India, particularly Gujarat, it was again Robert Brucefoot who retired from the Geological Survey of India, uh, became the first director of Geology and Mines Department that was established by the Gaikwad Principality. So he surveyed Sabarmati and Mahi River valleys and he was again the first person to document the presence of lower Paleolithic sites in this region. His work was later continued by Subarov and uh, continued by Subarov and later workers and as a result we have adequate information of the fact that Saurashtra region was uh, a major area where we have widespread distribution of lower Paleolithic sites. Sites in the Suki and Orsang valleys have been recently systematically studied by the archaeologists of uh, um, MS University uh, of Baroda in Vadodara. These are river sections um, you know, along the Suki uh, valley uh, where we have uh, the gravel bodies um, occurring at various levels along the river sections and the lower gravels contain the lo lower gravels uh, contain the lower paleolithic artifacts here we see a scatter of lower paleolithic artifacts such as cleavers and hand axes in the hill slope context away from the drainage network series of artifacts representing hand axes and cleavers made from uh, quartzite and also chert uh, have been um, gathered from a number of sites in the suki valley Another set of slides showing the variety uh, of uh, hand axes and cleavers in Saurashtra region. In Saurashtra, we have a couple of sites which have been excavated in the recent past. Among them, Samadhiala in the um, Kalubar Valley and uh, Jogpura in the Suki Valley are representative excavations of lower Paleolithic site. These are some of the smaller implements associated with the larger uh, large cutting tools like hand axes and cleavers. In addition to those sites which have been shown so far through this presentation, we also have a couple of more very important sites which were excavated um, in India during the 70s and 80s. Amongst them the site of uh, Bhimbetka, uh, particularly the rock shelter 3F23 and another site by name Paisra have contributed significantly to our understanding of the lower Paleolithic phase. Now the research ca being carried out in the region of Bimbetka, in the neighborhood of uh, uh, Bimbetka region, uh, new more interesting sites have also been uh, discovered and being investigated. Amongst them the site of Thikoda uh, has assumed greater importance because here the stone artifacts have been found at greater depths below the surface and uh, the evidence is likely to be uh, comparable uh, in terms of uh, uh, chronology with the site like Athirampakkam and Isampur in southern India. So this even in central India, the new efforts being made at establishing uh, absolute chronology of the earliest settlements uh, in the Indian subcontinent is gaining strength. And the fact that these settlements are situated in the inland areas, uh, they have been subject to least disturbance and majority of the sites are in the primary context. So as a result of investigations at a number of primary context sites, uh, it has now been possible to reconstruct behavioral evolution uh, in the lower Paleolithic communities across India. As a result of these investigations, we are also very sure that the earliest colonization of the Indian subcontinent by Homo erectus populations dates back to the lower Pleistocene and then the Indian subcontinent continued to be an ideal habitat for these Stone Age hunter-gatherers during the Pleistocene. For further details, please uh, go through the e-text and the e-text uh, uh, quadrant will provide more uh, information with respect to the context and uh, the investigations that have been carried out at a number of sites as well as the dates that we have obtained for these lower Paleolithic settlements in the Indian subcontinent. Thank you.